All right. So let us start uh, today's topic that is elastic beanstalk. Now, what is that uh, elastic beanstalk and what a fascinating concept it is? Let us try to talk on that. Now, let me explain you something that happens in your real scenarios. Normally, what will happen is we take an application and that application will be hosted. People will be connecting to it. So let us say we have some environments in which we will be working. Production environment will be there, development environment or staging environment in which all this task will be going on. So normally what we do is we will create one environment. We name it some environment. Maybe we'll call it uh, something ASD environment or something. In this environment, front end, I want one application to be hosted. So how you can do that? So you have to take a Linux machine or a Windows machine as per your requirement, and you can launch your uh, environment. Now maybe my environment is little heavy environment, so it may not be handled by one machine. So what we do, we'll take two machines over here maybe production one production two now i want the load to be taken by both of them so what we do we create something called load balancer right so we create uh, two machines and inside it we will configure some application maybe some tomcat application is there or any business application whatever you might be using that might be available here so what I need to do here is I need to create a two EC2 instance. I need to configure the applications. I need to create a load balancer. And if required, we can also go with the concept of autoscaler. You remember that whenever load increase, I also want an autoscaler to work with that, right? So I need to create an autoscaler and all that configuration, whatever is there, I need to configure that and maybe inside it I cannot depend on a regular IP so I also need an elastic IP over here so concept is such an environment you have to create on your own you have to create instances load balancer auto scaler all that thing right and obviously to make the changes in configuration we require some application codes that your developers will be giving to you now we make this kind of environment and we work with that. So you see, we have to create instances. We have to attach elastic IP. We have to go with load balancer. You have to go with auto scaler. All these things you have to create. And configuration has to be maintained like that. Now, instead of that, if there is a method where I only select that this, this, this environment I want, and it should create everything for me isn't it uh, brilliant that it is going to take my code and it is going to deploy everything it will create instances it will attach elastic ip it will create load balancer whatever is necessary for my application it is going to do that so that's lower my burden heavily or in other words if i tell you that you are going to purchase one computer you visit a computer store and you say that I need uh, this much of RAM, this much of CPU, this much of hard drive, and I want so and so operating system inside it and all that. So what that guy will do, he'll give you all the parts. You have to assemble it on your own and then you can run your computer. That is one way. Second way, you can take one branded laptop that is already having everything. So that is quite easy for me. I don't have to assemble it. I don't have to install the operating system. I'll get it ready made. That is very easy. Plug and play kind of thing will be there. So same like that, your uh, elastic beanstalk is. What beanstalk will do, it takes recommendations from you. And based on your recommendation, it prepares environment and application for you. And furthermore, there is more beautiful concept inside it. 
there is front end and back end concept see in front end we will have our web application through this people will be connecting and they will be doing the transactions like you have amazon flipkart and other uh, websites front end you will connect and you will do operations but back end it might be using other things to process your work also that is called worker environment so what is worker environment i'll tell you later first let us understand the stuff overview is it takes the recommendations from you and prepare the environment so headache will be taken care by Beanstalk. You just say what you want, give it all the required power, and it is going to prepare the environment for you in no time. Very easily, it is going to prepare. So it has a limited role of uh, developers also. The application and application code, what you are going to deploy, that will be given to you by developers. That is not our responsibility. So we just take the code upload the code and we will work with that so beanstalk is a developer centric view of deploying an application on aws it uses all our components what we have seen ec2 as load balancer rds etc so many things it is going to handle and create it is also going to use cloud watch to monitor everything we still have full control over configuration but it is only going to deploy the thing so our developer has one thing that he has to write the code give it to beanstalk and beanstalk will deploy your application any custom application whatever your company is deployed suppose we are a product or uh, yes product deployment companies like you have uh, micro microsoft it has office word powerpoint like that or you go with amazon so many services it is going to give product so any product that you want to deploy we go for this particular beanstalk concept now beanstalk will have an application you have application versions you see time to time versions are also uh, created and you have to update the versions also we create environment Conver environment is nothing but uh, the collection of different resources what you can do right one application at a time we can deploy and as i told you you have web server environment and worker environment what is web server and what is web tier we will understand you can create multiple environments for development testing production as per your thing so we create an application in that application we will upload the code now as you upload the code it will launch an environment and your application will be ready now let us say you want to update your version again you upload the new version it will deploy the code for you so we just create one application inside it it is going to manage everything automatically now beanstalk support so many platforms for your application like golang java java with tomcat uh, .NET core node.js python and so many are there and the beautiful thing is if you find that your desired concept is not available then it can uh, make that environment ready for you you just need to write to aws and within some time they will prepare that environment and give it to you so either you can deploy that code on ec2 instances or even you can go for container single container multi container pre configured container whatever it might be so as i told you web server is a front end environment where people will be connecting and managing. So here it is quite simple. You will be having your availability zones. We will be having our EC2 instances with application, autoscaler group, ELB. What the picture I draw exactly, this is your front end web environment. Now, see what happens over here is, if I put all the load on my web application itself, then it may not be able to take new requests right for example you see amazon is there or walmart might be there so many people might be ordering the things so who will take that order front end there will be one web server that will be hosting catalogs and all that thing you will be selecting the product making the order but in the background there are so many people who will be working for you to process your things different suppliers will be there different uh, uh, delivery persons will be there different uh, things will be there will be used in the backend 
so here also what we can do is front end there will be web environment to take your order in the back end we can make something called worker environment see worker environment we will use when the load is very very high so what we do in worker environment also there will be some <coughs> applications created and it will be working so order will be taken by your front end fellow and it will be sent to back end now here your order will be processed meanwhile your front end will be free to take new orders just think like that that you have visited some restaurants right so in restaurants also there will be two teams front end teams who will take your order and back end team who will prepare the order the chefs and all that thing so chefs will not come to you and they will not ask you order there will be waiters or front end team restaurants who will be taking the order and they will be giving that order to chef so chef will be preparing that order in the background and these fellow will be free to entertain other customers also if same fellow is taking order and same fellow is preparing the order then it is going to be impossible people will stop visiting i have really seen this in my area there was a small uh, setup what people have done same person who is taking the order and same person is preparing the order people fed up and stop visiting that place so that's what happened because load will be very high and processing time will be too less so in that case what we do we maintain two environment web environment that will be front end and worker environment that will be running in the back end to process your thing maybe your application is something called uh, banking application who will transferring your data from one place to other place or maybe you are booking a train ticket plane ticket so in the back end it is going to process that request searching for seats are available or not and like that so front end your thing will be taking the order and back end it is going to process so like that everyone maintains the environment front end and back end front end environment is called as uh, web environment and back end environment is called as worker environment worker environments also have an application to do your work front end will be very nice for display basically the web application through which you will be working back end you will have workers like your databases and other applications who will be working in that so this critical environment will be made in just some clicks that is the beauty of working with elastic beanstalk so beanstalk is nothing but creating your environments on the go with a very small information now previously making elastic beanstalk was very simple very very simple you simply go and create and uh, application as soon as you have created an application it will ask you detail that what application you are ma making and all that simple details it used to take and your application used to be ready but now as they process they have totally changed the process see i really feel for it that why they made earlier so simple and now why they are making little complicated so many questionings are there so many things it is going to ask now here in the back end you may be using either ec2 instances or you may be using some pods or uh, containers right containers are nothing but small part of your operating system that may run multiple applications to perform uh, many things in a small area that is called microservices or something so all these options have been added so what we do here how we work let me show you let us first of all log in into console totally the setup has been changed here now anywhere you like you can work mumbai hyderabad or any other region of your choice right so here i am going to set bean stock right so let's go to elastic bean stock and here acha it is not supported in hyderabad region no problem let me go to mumbai region so hyderabad is the newest region so it might still take some time this is the things what i created for uh, testing before our class so you see they are terminated just like ec2 instances what happens when you terminate ec2 instance also it will be there for some time after that it will get disappeared so something like that these environments are terminated 
now here what we have to do we have to create an application see application is nothing but just some front end name right so let me say current create an application what application maybe i'll say production for vpts you can give a description and say create you see it is just a name it's nothing more than anything you see it is just production vpts it does not have any environment inside it so first i created an application inside application we will be going for environment so here i created a web application that is the name now inside it all that setup i wanted to do what kind of setup maybe i want ec2 instance elastic ip load balancer auto scaler all these things i want so let us click on create environment now here it is asking what type of environment you want web server or worker right so i want front end web server environment there is no big difference between worker and web server worker we use a different application and web server we use a different application but both will be related web server will take the request and send that request to worker to process what is the application name you wanted to use see you have to give the same name what we have created that application or let us say that i don't want that uh, application name to be here i want it to be created automatically so let me do one thing i'll just delete this particular fellow let the environment create the application vice versa you can do first this then that or both at a time so let's go to environment create an environment here it is asking what is the application name you want so i will say that the application name i want is vpts production environment now you see environment will also be taken automatically with the same name and if you want to give some name you can use some name also for example i want to call it uh, vpts.apsouth something so this will be my url it is small you can even make it further small with the help of route 53 alias or canonical name we have seen if you want you can give a description about it now on which platform you wanted to create it so i'll say you can select anything you can go for docker go java node js python ruby tomcat anything tomcat is a middleware that will connect application and web server so it's okay for me i want to use it you can see which version you want you can have different version of it minor versions if you want you can upload and all now what is application code i am going with sample code but if your developers has given the code you can directly upload it you can browse it from your laptop and upload it or you can put it from s3 url wherever it is so in my case i am going with a sample application now what kind of configurations you want do you want everything you take single instance with free tier eligibility or single instance using spot instances you know spot instances it is good for worker environment because in the back end the instances will be needed more so time to time instances created deleted that is good but for application spot is not good now if you go for high availability it will create load balancer also one active one passive like that it is going to do or you can go for any custom configuration i am going with single instance that is fine for me because i want to be within free tier limit see one more thing beanstalk is free there is no charge for beanstalk but whatever beanstalk is creating ec2 instances elastic ip load balancer auto scaler all this will be chargeable there is no charge for beanstalk but the underlying resources what we are using is chargeable so let's go for next see this many questioning was not there earlier now it is asking you to create one role to continue see aws beanstalk is going to access ec2 instance it is going to access load balancer and all your configurations will be stored in s3 bucket so it needs power to access ec2 instance s3 buckets load balancer auto scaler everything so for all that we require a role so what we do we will go for create new service role so i'm not going to create anything let it create one role automatically this is beautiful 
it is only creating you see so many permissions it is going to give so many so whatever requirement is there based on that it is going to create one role that it be fine key pair so if you want to connect to your ec2 instance which key pair you want see any key pair that you have you can give now here is something that has given me really hard time to understand earlier it says that we need to create an instance profile what is this see what happens here is beanstalk actually creates one ec2 instance now that ec2 instance should also have permission to connect to your web server environment worker environment so i need to create an instance profile instance profile is nothing but the role for instance here i am creating the role for beanstalk beanstalk to access ec2 instance been stopped to access s3 load balancer and all here we need to go with our instance if you skip it your environment will fail it will never create an environment right so what i wanted to do here is i want to create an ec2 instance profile but the question here is what shall i select see when i researched about it i find out over here ec2 instance profile for elastic bean stop you just go to amazon documentation and here they have explained us create a role with these three options what options beanstalk web tier beanstalk worker tier and multi container docker all these things are required how to create you have to go to identity and access management go to iam in iam go to roles in roles create a role for which service aws service see i want ec2 to connect to beanstalk so i have to go with aws service and here i need to select ec2 only because the connectivity from ec2 to beanstalk right so ec2 i really feel that here also they should have given an option create new profile but i don't know why so it is clearly telling when you go to free view permission detail it says you need uh, beanstalk web tier you need worker tier permission and it is telling multi container so it is telling copy this and create a role so instead of asking us if they give a simple option create new role like here it is easy i don't know unnecessarily they have skipped it and if i skip this part my environment fit so let's go to iam let's select ec2 go to next here you search for elastic or simply you can search for beanstalk see so many options it will show you so in beanstalk three things we have to select one is beanstalk multi container docker other one is web tier and the last one is worker tier these three things must be there what it is telling beanstalk web tier worker tier multi container docker these are the three things what you have to select mandatory next and it is asking you to decide the role name i'll say ec2 instance profile for beanstalk because i don't want it to forget it so i'm giving it big name now these three options are selected inside it let me go to create role or if you want you can add up a tag here name you can say ec2 to be installed okay it says it should not have that dash over here okay still the name is problem ec2 to be installed let's give it a simple name so you see your role has been created here now let's refresh it go to instance profile you see your profile is here now let us go to next now few more question these many questioning was never there it is asking you do you want it to go for database actually i don't really want it to go with databases over here right 
so let me just go for vpc i'll say my instances should be created in which zone maybe i'll say created in 1a 1b within these two zones i wanted to create no need to go for public ip i don't want to directly connect to this instance from outside this is our backend fellow and we should never give it public access leave, leave it like that only now here is one more question do you want it to install rds sql see two days back we studied about rds rds is a database every application requires a database to be there in the backend so here it is asking you that do you want it to create a database also if yes then you have to enable it as soon as you say enable so many details it is going to ask you it will ask you that uh, which environment you want to create database which database you want to use same rds option what we have done so in the back end one database will also be created for us right so what i'll do i'll say no database otherwise it is going to take a very lengthy time so let us say disable database in real scenarios if required we'll also go for database adding here on then we'll go to next here it is asking you that the storage container and all that thing leave it default no need to disturb and uh, here it is asking us which security group you want to go for it just select default default security group will allow everything now if auto scaling you wanted to go how many instances you want to create do you want to work with single instance or load balance see if you say load balancer you have to select minimum one instance maximum how many instances it will create in our environment we are going with single instance and that should be on demand instance right what architecture and what type of instance you want it to create see here you can create t2 micro or t3 micro whatever or you can select anything else whatever is there inside it like you see i want to go with t2 micro maybe this type of instance i want i want to be within free tier so i'm changing it to t2 micro or if require you can also ask it to create t3 micro also maybe no problem maybe in future i want to need it so i can go for that also but i'll say t2 micro is okay let's go for next <clears throat> and here it is asking you how do you want to monitor your uh, environment if you go for enhanced detail metrics it is going to use extra charges will be there i'll go for basic right and do you want it to update your minor patches see what happens here is if there is a new version available then what if new version is available i am telling every saturday check for update and update it so this is what it is going to do automatically minor updates will be done if you want email notification you can see give uh, an email address so you will get the information roll back that whenever any problem is happen you want to roll back at once yes right deactivation all the health detail is there and what type of container you want to create s3 logs do you want it to maintain or not that's all up to you you can just leave it say next say something i did build space health reporting system where is that health reporting system i did not disable anything okay let us keep it detailed and see fine so maybe basic is not acceptable it's okay let's give it detailed monitoring all this detail is there still it is telling the same thing option name manage action enable update require enhance health reporting so we have already select enhance health reporting let's say submit it okay so here you see you will find events that what it is doing 
first of all it is creating an s3 bucket where your data will be stored so you can actually go to uh, s3 bucket and in s3 bucket you will see all the data getting uploaded over here so it is going to create a bucket and in this bucket it is going to keep all your resources detail complete environment detail will be stored up over here next thing what it is doing it has created a security group for beanstalk purpose in the events it is going to explain you everything it has created an elastic ip also for you so you see everything is getting prepared automatically if you go to your ec2 instances over here you may see that one vpts production environment machine is also creating and not only it has been created it has created a security group for us also not only security group if required as we have selected single so there is no load balancer but there will be a load balancer also if required it is also creating an elastic ip for us so tagging is so beautiful by seeing the name you can see that this is related to your environment so it has uh, created the instance you can refresh it now you see instance launch has been completed so let's go to ec2 instances refresh it and see instances getting launched over here right now let's come up here refresh it previously it used to be super simple very nicely and very easily we used to manage it but now a little bit uh, security perspective they have enhanced it So instance deployment is successful, fine. Instance has been added in our environment. Application is now available. So successfully launched the environment. So our environment is now successfully launched. That's what it is telling. You can go to environments and see status is okay. If you enter into it, it says it is available. Health check is going on. This will take some time. So I don't want it to wait for it. See, this is the uh, domain where you have to visit. So just click over here. It will take you to a domain. And here is your front end application ready. Now, this is just a sample application. So I'm getting this page. If it is a real application, you will get login, display purposes, all those activities you can do, just like. Uh, Amazon uh, console page is there exactly something like that. It will allow you to log in and backend. So many things will be there that will be utilized. So it is going to take some time over here. Now you see it says our environment is successfully launched. It is now available. You can work. You can monitor health that how the performances is going on, which instance is being utilized over here. What is the instance actions you want to reboot, terminate, whatever. Logs you can monitor. I have not enabled logs. If you have enabled the logs, it will be available here. Another monitoring things will be available. CPU utilization, network utilization. Are there any health issues or norm? Or if you have created any alarm, it will be here. Or now you can create an alarm. Alarm means if there is anything wrong, you will receive emails and all. Right? And if you have any minor updates, you can upload your updates here and it will work. So this is how you can create web app, uh, environment. Same way if you want, you can create a worker environment. Same settings. Which application you have to give the same application name what we have over here. Because I want it to work within same application. So what is the name? VPTS prod. This name only I have to use. So you can go to create worker environment. My application is this fellow only in which I'm going to create it. Now, this will be my worker environment, right? So whatever it might be, you can go for it, right? So I'll say this is not prod environment. 
VPTS prod and maybe I'm going to call it work environment. Rest of the story is same. Which application you want to deploy and backend it can be anything, right? Do you want to go with sample application, single instance, same things, whatever we have done for web environment here also the same thing you have to do. So what will happen is your web environment will take the orders and worker environment will actually process your request and all that thing will be working. Now, finally, if you wanted to delete your environments, then you can simply click on your environment, go to action. So if you want, you can clone your environment and create new environment if you want. Normally, what will happen is if you want same setup one more time, so you can clone it up and you can make two environment for two different things. Or you have other restart your application server, rebuild the things for you, save the configuration, lo load the configuration, anything you have, you can do it. But I don't want anything, let me just destroy the environment. So I'll go to actions and I'll say terminate environment. Which environment would you like to terminate? Let me select this environment, copy and paste, terminate it. This will take a little while as it is going to destroy all the artifacts. What artifacts? It will terminate your EC2 instance. It will remove Elastic IP. It will also remove finally the S3 bucket what is created. Observe over here. Right? So let us uh, just see how much time will it take. So you see the uh, instance is getting shut down. After instance is uh, deleted, you'll see it will also delete the security group that got created. After that, the elastic IP that was created, that will also be gone. You can see the live task that is going on. Go to VPTS environment and here in actions you can see. So first, it is waiting for EC2 instance to get terminated. So instance is going to take a little while to get terminated. Still says shutting down. It is now terminated. Let's go to environment and see. So instance has been removed. What next? waiting for some other time see one after the other all artifacts has to be deleted instance is deleted thereafter it must go to security group and delete the security group also so it's taking some time Okay, now you see deleted elastic IP, deleted security group, okay. Terminate environment completed successfully. So it says we have also deleted any SMS topics if there are any. An environment has been terminated. So see, it has been terminated successfully.
although it is telling that environment is terminated but still you will see it is available here so it will be there for next one hour or two hour still that the name will be there why because maybe you change your mind you can go to actions and you can say restore environment just with one click everything that is deleted will be recreated so maybe it happens that you know now you change your mind you again want to rebuild the environment so just go to actions and restore but after one hour again this thing will be removed completely now maybe i don't want that application to be remaining whole project is completed i want to delete this application also go to applications and say i want to delete the application what is the name of the application whatever the name just copy and paste it here vpts prod that is the name of my application so you see in no time the application will also be deleted let's go and see what about s3 bucket so you see s3 bucket is still there so this is something why it is not going to delete it maybe you want to restore back your application from s3 bucket so still there is a chance that you can get it back here it is so after everything is deleted everything is gone then this will also be removed it will take some time it is not going to delete it immediately it will keep your s3 bucket for some time but maybe i have decided that i don't really need it so you can just select your s3 bucket and you can empty it right do you really want to delete it it says yes you have to type permanent delete let's copy and paste it say exit after that select your bucket and say delete it is asking us to type the bucket name copy paste and it is deleted okay it says you don't have permission to delete the bucket not a problem see why it is telling as such if you go to your s3 bucket in s3 bucket go to permissions in here it applies some policy so if i don't remove this policy it will not allow me to delete the bucket so just delete this policy by typing delete done now you go back to bucket select the bucket and delete it just type the name of the bucket control c control v that's it see now no problem your s3 bucket has also been deleted so this is the way we have to work with your uh, elastic beanstalk a little bit developer centric concept so that easily developers should write a code and create the application without worrying about instances elastic ip load balancer and all everything will be taken care